Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Young Turks where we bring you the story of a startup founded by four friends who spotted an opportunity in mobile advertising back in 2008 when mobiles weren't ubiquitous and the Android and iOS platforms didn't exist. InMobi was building an independent ad network before Facebook and Google began changing the rules of the game. Now the founders then took the tough decision to build a product company out of India and the venture has seen its highs becoming the country's first unicorn back in 2011 and its lows with people labeling in Mobi a has-been in 2015. But two years of hunkering down and doing what's right has helped the startup turn things around. The venture has turned profitable in 2016 and is set for its next leg of growth. Is the story now sustainable? Joining us today to discuss that is the co-founder and CEO, Naveen Tiwari. Naveen, thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you know, to start with, Naveen, the last two years have been difficult and that would be putting it mildly. Uh, if I look at the headlines and the conversations surrounding InMobi between 2015 and now, it was all about layoffs, it was about debt, it was about attrition. In fact, even in an email that you wrote to your employees, you called it a make or break time for the company. Uh, take me through what the last two years have actually meant for you. Here's how I would describe it. I think the last two years have been um, uh, tough because we've been making a transition from being what I would call a startup into, a, into an enterprise. And, and an enterprise that I please believe is sustainable and can global and become much larger. And therefore, you know, we had to solve for certain things that we didn't necessarily solve for when we were a startup or we were at least in the phase of startup. I think media kind of mistook us um, or our changes to essentially be articulating them as attrition uh, or, or, or other things. Mm. I am very, very glad that we as a company and, and our, uh, everyone who works here has been able to change, take the company through that change in the last two years by making some what I would call common sense decisions mm. and tough decisions. And the reason why I use both of these words at the same time is because that's probably what requires to become, to move from a startup phase into an enterprise phase. And therefore, you know, it feels extremely exciting um, to be in these times right now where you can now look and plan for things, not just for the next year or two, but for the next five years. And that's probably why, you know, we came into existence to begin with. And therefore, being able to do that truly right now, not depending on somebody else, but depending on your own fate, is absolutely a great feeling to have. Speaking of those yeah. tough decisions, uh, Naveen, if I could get you to give us a sense of the financials, because, uh, you know, what I was looking at, and data shows up, that uh, year ending March 2015, losses were at about 40 million. The previous year, about 44.6 million. So can you give me a sense of where things stand as far as your current financials are concerned in terms of revenues? And of course, you've now uh, turned uh, black. I think the interesting piece within this is not just the fact that we've been able to turn profitable. And by the way, just to give you a sense, it's just not, you know, merely profitable, but it's at a fairly strong, healthy profitability. Mm -hmm. Can you quantify uh, that for us, so Naveen? What does strong, healthy profitability uh, mean? Well, I, I, here is what I'll tell you, is when we exited, you know, 2016, quarter four, we were on a run rate. Uh, of a profitability of somewhere between 40 to 50 million dollars. Okay. Um, and so therefore, uh, that effectively would tell you the, the scale at which we were, we were working uh, from where we were, you know, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we, by the way, I just want to also break the myth in general where people believe that, you know, as you go for profitability, you're letting grow of growth. That mm -hmm. also ne didn't necessarily happen. We were able to go for growth. Yes. Yes, the growth was slightly muted because you had to get rid of decisions and, and deals that were loss making for you earlier. Mm. You, were, you it stopped doing those deals. You, and that's where I use the word common sense. Mm. You stopped doing some of the basics that, that you were not doing earlier and you started to do now. Even as far as your revenue picture is concerned, Naveen, and we've spoken about this in the past, you've had that billion dollar aspiration for several years now. Uh, what is the, the situation as far as the revenue run rate is concerned? I think that... Uh, we can see a side to it, uh, a path to it. I mm. think it might take us another couple of years to get there. 
But, you, but I think now we'll go for it on our own terms. That's the big difference. What does that mean? When you say that you're going to go for it on your own terms, and again, I'm looking at uh, data put out by various publications. At the end of March 2016, revenue at between 320 and 325 million dollars. So, in the near term, what is the aspiration? If we let the one billion dollar aspiration still sort of uh, lower away or further away on the horizon? Yeah, look, I think uh, uh, we, we expect ourselves to grow roughly about, you know, 30 to 35 percent. And if you take that growth rate, apply that on the numbers that you saw for 2015, um, I would argue that we could potentially grow, uh, you know, over the next three years or so, 30 to 50 percent growth. That should get us to about a billion dollars. Uh, so we, may, and we have another, you know, two to three years before we get to the billion dollar mark. Okay. Uh, Naveen, you know, you talked about tough decisions and you talked... And by the way, I just yes. want to qualify. Yes. I just want to quantify the fact that this billion dollars is not a GMV number, but this <laughs> is uh, a true revenue number. I, I'm glad that started... You get confused by those things. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to note that a lot of founders have now finally decided to not talk uh, in terms of GNV, but to talk in terms of real numbers. Uh, Naveen, you know, yes. take me through some of the tough decisions that you've had to take because, uh, you know, growing from a startup to an enterprise, as you pointed out, is also about the art of sacrifice. It's about taking those tough decisions. Yep. Uh, it's also about narrowing your focus, sharpening your focus. It's about giving up on this, I want to be something for everybody, to I want to focus on some strategic markets that make sense for me. So what can we expect now over the next few years as far as your growth plans are concerned? Some of the tough decisions that we felt that we had to get, get away from um, were doing loss-making deals. For example, you know, it's, it is very hard when you are in the phase of growth to essentially say no to business, mm. to say no to revenue. But a lot of this revenue comes at the cost of that not being, uh, you know, marginally profitable for you. And we used to have that business for probably a large portion of our existence. Mm. And I think those were the deals that we basically said no to. Or even if we said yes to, they were extremely selective and we were extremely clear on why we were saying yes to it. And yet, by the way, here's what I would add. We didn't necessarily see significant growth dip because of those. I think the second one was essentially to look at, be very, very precise in where your investments would go. Three years ago, given the phase that we were in, we would say yes to almost decisions. We would say yes to decisions of in every market mm. for ourselves. We mm. would say yes to, you know, whichever country we, we were seeing any growth in, we would deploy some share of our incremental investments into that bucket. But over the last you know, two years, we started to make very tough decisions and mm. we started to give money only to few countries. We started to call out few countries where we would not give them any incremental budgets, but keep them on the leash. But everyone appreciates this once you have that hard conversation yeah. because they, they actually like to see the company succeed. So, for example, we started to invest a lot more in U.S. and China yeah. in 2015 and 2016. We did not invest in any other market as aggressively as we invested in uh, uh, and U.S. and uh, uh, China, I think. Um, <coughs> the, the other markets where we, we then started to invest from in 2017, in addition to U.S. and China, were Indonesia, Australia, uh, and India. And we said, look, these are markets where we now need to essentially go for and look at investments and scale the market mm. uh, for ourselves. There was a lot of product investments, technology R&D investments that we're doing in multiple areas. We cut down and shut down certain areas where we saw that, look, this is not going to give us something meaningful over the next two years or so. And we said, look, we'll come back to this. We'll pick our bets. So we have a new frame, framework that we use now, which we call 60-30-10. 60 percent 60 goes of our investment goes towards revenue business or business where revenue gets impacted here and now. 30 mm. percent goes where we can see an impact over the next 12 to 24 months, and 10 percent goes towards something that we can see beyond 24 months. Okay. I'll add the last piece to this, uh, which was the management bandwidth is also equally important and yeah. that's not a commodity and that's not something that you can just say, hey, I can distribute this mm. over a many, many things. Mm. And I think that's where the people side of the story comes in where we said, look, as we do less number of things, we'll be more focused, which is what 
you were also mentioning. Yeah. And I think those are the things that we did that we'll be able to take the business to a level where it, it, you know, it invests on its own. We don't have to rely on external capital. Mm. We don't have to worry about external forces. Uh, we just have to care about what's right for us. Well, time for us to take a break, but when we return, we continue our conversation on this Young Tax exclusive with Naveen Tiwari on the InMobi turnaround story. People around you will tell you how hard growth would be if you try and force yourself towards profitability. It's a completely o overused ar argument. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.